Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna go ride the bike Friday today and then we're gonna have a talk about this bike because a lot of people have been asking me questions about this bike and I thought in this video, I'll answer those questions. Okay guys, we made it back. We didn't go on a super long ride. We just went and rode around the parks and uh, took the bike Friday out. I like taking this bike out every once in a while. It is a pure joy to ride, a pure joy to ride. In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about this bicycle, why I haven't talked about this bicycle before now. I'm just pretty much gonna give you my thoughts on this bicycle, but we're not gonna do a review and there's reasons for that. Okay guys, we came back to the apartment to talk about this bicycle. Now this bicycle is the Bike Friday New World Tourist. This bike, as its name implies, is for touring. Long distance, fully loaded touring which there's a plethora of accessories that you can get to add to this bicycle to meet your touring needs. Before we get too deep in this video, I wanna talk about Bike Friday as a company, and I wanna talk about why I haven't mentioned this bicycle and why I don't talk about it. Now, unlike Brompton and unlike a lot of other bicycle manufacturers, Bike Friday doesn't have authorized dealers and retail stores to sell their products. They are a built to order bicycle company. Basically you get online, you look at the bicycles, they offer a few different models, you pick the model out you want, there's a bunch of drop down menus, you can pick the frame, the different types of handlebars, all your things that you want to put on that bicycle, and you order it specifically off of the website. About 24 to 48 hours later, you will be contacted by a Bike Friday representative. He will go over your order, he will confirm your decisions, he will ask you any relevant questions. If you have any questions, he will also give you an estimated shipping date. Now, under the best of times, okay, under the best of times, it usually took about one and a half to two months, maybe even three months, depending, 
to get your bicycle built. And that's one of the things the representative will discuss with you. He will give you an estimated date that the bike will be completed, and then they will ship it out after that. So in normal times, you usually had to wait on average about two months before you got your bicycle. Now, I called last year around springtime 2020, and they were saying, we're way out, you know, with supply chain disruptions, with, you know, the health crisis that's been going on. They told me five months five months for them to build my bike. That's a long time. And even recently I heard somebody say that that's up to eight or nine months. I'm not sure if that's true. I haven't contacted Bike Friday to find this out, but eight or nine months now. So whew, that's a long time. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I order a bicycle, I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I'm just so excited to get it. I mean, I can't even wait the five days for it to ship from wherever it's shipping from. So I'm like, is it here yet? Is it here yet? Is it here yet? You know, I'm just very anxious to get my hands on my bicycle, right? I couldn't imagine having to wait five months, six months, seven months, you know, just however long it was going to take. That would drive me nuts. So most of the time, me, like a lot of other people, are probably like, eh, forget it. I'm not going to order one. It's just going to take too long. So that is one of the biggest reasons why I haven't mentioned these bikes, because they are not readily available, and you cannot get them very easily. Now, I respect Bike Friday. They were a company that was founded in 1992 by a group of people that had a passion for cycling and they created these awesome machines out of the necessity of that love mainly i think because these bikes can fold down and you could take them anywhere in the world with you because that's what it's all about exploring the world on two wheels and what better way to explore our world than on a bike that's two wheels that can pack into a small suitcase and you can take it on the airplane and go anywhere in the world you want to go most bikes as most of you know full-size bikes are a pain to travel with you have to take them completely apart the boxes or the bike carriers are extremely big and cumbersome they cannot fit into your uber they cannot fit into big trucks even they're just very difficult to deal with bikes like this can fold up it comes with an included suitcase that you can stuff this bike in take it anywhere in the world you want to on an airplane without getting any extra charges for carrying a bicycle with you so it encourages you to take your bike everywhere with you now let me show you some of the features on this bicycle now the first thing you're going to notice is that this has got a steel frame the only other folding bike that i have that has a steel frame is the brompton so i like the steel frame it has got regular style V-brakes. It's got sunlight rims with uh, sax hubs, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. It's got a quick release front lever on the front here. It's got a quick release for the handlebar stem. This comes apart, which I'll show you later. The H handlebars give you more hand positions for more comfortability when riding on long distance rides. The handlebars themselves split into two pieces, actually three pieces. Both sides will separate from the center shaft. It does have an adjustable screw stem here so that you could adjust it down or adjust it up as needed. It has a three by seven gear system. This operates the internal hub, which is on the rear of the bicycle. This operates the derailleur, which is a seven speed. It's got regular pull levers. Nothing special there. It has many, many water bottle mounting points. Two here, two here, and two here. Perfect for touring, guys. You can keep all kinds of water bottles on this bike, which is fabulous. So all the different mounts allow you to mount a lot of different accessories. The front and rear rack mountings allow you to be able to carry all your luggage securely. It's got a regular size seat post, unlike the Brompton, that you can fit all your bike light accessories without having to get special light accessories because this is your standard stem size. Of course, I put a Brompton seat on it. You can outfit this with folding pedals, although mine doesn't have folding pedals. It just has regular platform pedals. It has a quick release right here, which is integral to folding it, and I'll show you how it folds up later. It has another V-brake in the back. It has a one by seven system, a one by seven with a Sax Sentara derailleur, which is an older style derailleur, but it's also got the Sax three-speed internal hub system. So this is kind of cool, okay? That means you have your one gear in the front, your seven gears here, and your three gears inside your internal hub. Now the cool thing about this, that makes this a 21-speed bicycle because seven times three is 21. 
which is perfect for a touring bicycle because this gives this bicycle 21 gears. None of the rest of the folder bikes that I have have nowhere close to the gear range that this bike has. Do you guys like remember when I rode the Brompton up Mount Evans and I was like struggling and a lot of people said, hey, get that bike with an 8% under gear ratio and that'll climb. Well, sure, it'll climb fine, but when it comes to going down hills or when you're on the flats, you're, I'm spinning out, so that doesn't work. So it's almost like if whatever application you use the Brompton under, you're gonna have to change the gearing out. So if I wanna go fast, I'm gonna have to put an 8% over. If I wanna go up hills, I gotta put 8% under. You don't have to worry about that with the Bike Friday. It has all the low gears, all the high gears. It has all the gears you're ever gonna want and I have 20 by 1.35 Schwabi Marathon pluses on this bicycle which to be quite honest with you I have a ton of those tires I have like six sets of those tires for this bicycle and that's just for touring and I also wanted to stock up just in case there's supply chain disruptions but yes guys this bicycle is built for touring it's built for fully loaded touring you're able to put a rear rack on this thing and a front rack both racks, so you could have a front rack, a rear rack, you could put your panniers and your bags, and you could put full-size panniers on the back of this the way the rack is designed. They have a folding rack that can fold with the bike when you want to put it in the case. Now, let's just talk about this Sax one by drive system, okay? Sax was a company that was founded uh, a long, long time ago. I think it was in the eight, early 1900s, 1800s, I don't know, but it was founded in Germany. I know Sax from automotive, from cars, because they make a lot of components for cars. I didn't know they had a bicycle division until I got this bicycle. Now they started out as a ball bearing company. They are masters at making ball bearings. So they started out making ball bearings and they moved into bicycle components through their bicycle division. And they started making the rear internal hubs. Now, Saks got bought out by SRAM in 1997 or 1998, I forget. And consequently, that is what year this bicycle is. I know you wouldn't guess by looking at this bicycle, but this is a 1998 bicycle. It is old but it still works flawlessly. Now I'm gonna tell you out of all the folding bikes I own, I have never had one that has that smooth of bearings in it. These bearings are like butter. They're so unbelievably smooth. That's one of the things that makes this bike a joy to ride is that they are so smooth. The shifting is beautiful, but the bearings, the ride are just, Oh my God, it's so smooth. That's when I started doing some research on Saks and realized, yeah, they made bearings. That was their whole business in the beginning. So they knew what they're doing. And I'm telling you guys, the Germans can make some bearings. Now guys, this is a 23 year old bicycle and it rides as smooth as the day it was brand new. But when I got this bicycle, it was in pieces. I put it back together and I expected to have a ton of problems with a 23 year old bicycle and I didn't have one. Everything worked flawlessly. Now, since Saks got bought out by SRAM, they made another version of this hub from what I read, and it wasn't as good as the old German Saks system, so I'm glad I have the Saks system. But even the SRAM hubs have been discontinued, so you can't even get anything with the SRAM anymore. But the older Saks system was the best system in my opinion, and if this ever goes out, there's no way I'm gonna be able to fix it. For 23 years old, this thing is going strong. And this bike has seen a lot of touring. So anytime I'm going up into the mountains on a long, long ride, this is the bicycle I'll take. If I'm going to go on a long touring trip where I'm not gonna be doing a lot of multimodal transportation, you know, getting on trains and buses and riding the bike. If I'm not doing a lot of that, this is the bike I'll take. Like if I go overseas and I'm gonna be doing a lot of long haul bike rides, this is the bike I'll take. Now, if I'm going to be doing a lot of multimodal transportation, you know, like if I'm getting on buses and trains quite frequently, then the Brompton is the one I will take for those kinds of touring expeditions because obviously it's a fast folder. This is not a fast folder and that is a downside to this bike. One of the few downsides to this bike is it doesn't fold very elegantly, neatly, fast. It's not any of those. It can fold up, but it's mainly for transportation like on an airplane, not to be 
taking on and off the bus real quick. Even though this bike can do well as a city commuter, its bread and butter is those long distance rides. You gotta get a bicycle for what you're gonna be doing. If you're just gonna be running around the city, Brompton all the way, Bike Friday for long distance touring, definitely my choice for that. The biggest thing that I do not like about Bike Friday is how hard and difficult it is to get one and how long it takes. <laughs> I'm an impatient person. I come from the instant gratification culture and I want to get my bike within a week of ordering it. That is never gonna happen with Bike Friday. If a person really wants a Bike Friday, what do they end up doing? They end up looking at the used market. And to tell you the honest to God truth, I'd rather you steer clear of the used Bike Friday market. And there's various reasons for that. The biggest reason is because people do tend to spend a lot of money on these bicycles. Now, let's just, Think about this for a second, okay? If you had a regular bicycle, let's just say a Trek and Monda or whatever, if you bought each and every component for this bicycle individually, you would pay way over the retail cost of that bicycle. Well, here's why. Because manufacturers, especially big manufacturers like Trek, they buy their components and their component group sets and all their parts and frames and everything in bulk. When you buy things in bulk, as you guys know from going to Costco all the time, they're cheaper, right? So yes, everything is a lot cheaper. So ultimately you get a deal by buying the completed bicycle. They can afford to sell it at a reasonable price because they paid so much less for the things that make up that bike. All the components and parts that make up that bike, they paid so much less for it. You're not gonna get that same luxury. You're gonna to have to pay a lot more to build that bike than they paid to build that bike. And this is the problem with Bike Friday. So let's say you wanted to buy particular components for your Bike Friday. Let's say you wanted to get a, a roll-off hub or maybe an Alfine 11 speed or maybe you wanted to get a Nexus 8, whatever it is. They'll get it for you. You're gonna have to pay the retail price for that and then pay to have the wheel built. So they'll take the wheel and they'll build the hub in together but you're paying all that extra labor to do that. Now, the cool thing is that the bikes are completely customizable. You can build it to your specifications and have it exactly the way you want. The downside is that costs a lot of money to do that. And the problem is it doesn't really raise the value of that bike at all. So when these people go to sell these bikes used, they're like, man, I paid $6,000 for that bike, which... <laughs> If the bike was mass produced, and of course, you know, hand building things obviously increases the cost of things as opposed to automated building. So, you know, when you add in all those costs, yeah, they're paying six grand for that bike. When in reality, it might not even be worth three. You know what I'm saying? So when they go to resell it, they don't realize how much that bike is dropped in value. And of course, most sellers do not understand the law of depreciation in general. So that turns a lot of people off to the used market. And also, it's a supply and demand thing. Since there is no retail stores, since there is no new supply out there and you have to order the bike and have it built, a lot of people think they're justified in, well, you can't readily easily get one, so I'm gonna charge a lot of money for my used one. And there's that mentality. That doesn't mean you won't find a gym every once in a while. I found this one. I got this one with the trailer. I got this one with the original receipt, the original pictures everything with this bicycle. So I, I lucked out, but you might not be so lucky. So all in all guys, I would tell you to steer clear of the used bike Friday market. Unless it's a local thing where you can go to the person's house, look at the bike and negotiate a fair price for it. Okay, we are going to fold this thing up and I'm gonna show you exactly how it folds. The first thing you wanna do is unlatch this latch right here and then the handlebars are going to slide upwards. Now, sometimes this can be a little tight. The weird thing is they just hang there and that's something I do not like. <laughs> I don't like that at all. You come here to the rear and there's a latch right here. You undo that latch and the seat folds forward like that. And then of course the rear will slide up like this. How you position this. Yeah, that's not a very elegant looking folder. I don't 
consider the fact that it cannot quick fold a downside because it's all about what you want to use the bicycle for. The fact that it folds is why it's on this channel, but the fact that it doesn't quick fold, I don't care because this bike is not something I'm going to be taking on and off of trains consistently or commuting back and forth to work on. It is for cycle touring and that's why I like this bike because of all the features I just explained that benefit in a situation where you're actually touring with it. Now I have the case to it. The case turns into a trailer and hooks on the back part of the bicycle. That's an actual option that you can get through Bike Friday. The bike folds up. Of course, you have to take it partially apart. The wheels gotta come off, the handlebars gotta come down, and then everything fits in that case. Now they have these little protectors all these little rubber pieces that fit over the frame pieces, fit over the bicycle frame, everything to keep things from getting scratched. And it takes a while to learn how to fold this bicycle up and put it in the case properly and put all the other stuff in the case properly. Most people don't take the time to learn, so they're stuffing this bicycle in, they're jamming things up, and they're scratching the heck out of these bicycles. So it is very common when you buy these bicycles, even at the overinflated prices, some people are charging for them, for the bicycles to be scarred, scratched up, and look like complete crap. But see, I would never use that case anymore because it's a plastic piece of, I don't like it personally. It's got these little tiny wheels and I would rather use my chubby trailer and then store the bike in the chubby trailer and then, you know, attach the chubby trailer when I get to wherever I'm going. I think the chubby trailer is a much better touring trailer if I'm going to pull a trailer behind me than that plastic case that comes with the bike Friday. But regardless, it was a forward thinking idea at the time. Would I recommend these bikes? Sure, yeah, if you can find one at a reasonable price, and I do mean reasonable price. Most people are gonna overcharge you for these because they spent way too much on it in the first place because they bought everything a la carte, you know what I mean? When you build the bicycle from all of its components, it's gonna cost a lot more. When it's hand built, it's gonna cost a lot more. So I would not recommend buying one of these unless you buy it brand new. And even buy it brand new, don't go for, I mean, like me, I'm a kid in the candy store. I'm like, oh, I want that, I want that, I want that, I want that. Just get the bike basic. <laughs> That's the way I would do it. And then if you have to upgrade over a period of time, go ahead and do that. But like I said, it takes so long to get these bikes. A lot of people just say, forget it. I'm not gonna wait five, six, seven, eight, nine months, however long it takes nowadays. And um, they just say, forget it. And they go to the used market. If you do go used market, take a look at the bike. Don't let them ship it. If you have to buy it offline where you're not gonna be able to see it before you purchase it, make sure they get high resolution photographs of the frame. Because here's the thing, like I said, if they don't know how to pack it right, you can guarantee this frame is gonna be riddled with scars and scratches. I happen to get lucky. There are a couple scratches on this bike and a couple of you know places, but luckily in no place that's really noticeable. So I got lucky in that respect. So to wrap things up, guys, I'm a big fan of the Bike Friday. I just don't like the fact that it takes so long to get one if you wanna buy one brand new. I'm a big fan of the bike for cycling and touring. Um, if I'm going to the mountains and I'm going on a long mountain ride where I'm gonna be taking a lot of luggage, this is the bike I take, guys. The Brompton is a great bike, but at the same time, I don't see how anybody carries a backpack strapped to the back like a lot of these people do, and I can't imagine that's going to be very stable. But regardless, I mean, this is a bike that's actually built for that kind of thing, for touring and cycling long distances and carrying a lot of luggage. Okay guys, so that's my video talking about the Bike Friday, giving you all the little features of this bicycle, telling you a lot about it so that everybody knows about this bicycle and you know a little bit about Bike Friday and how they operate and how they do things. This, in my opinion, is a very, very good bike. It is up there with Brompton when it comes to quality and longevity. There's some things I like the Brompton better for, there's some things I like the Bike Friday better for, but they're both on an equal footing when it comes to quality. This is 1998 bike, guys. 1998. So if you guys have any comments or questions about the Bike Friday, leave it in the comment and questions section. Slap a like on the video if you like it and tell me about your own Bike Friday stories. I know some of you guys out there own Bike Fridays. What do you guys think about them? What do you think about the New World Tourist? I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section. So with that being said, I am going to call it a day and I will talk with you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.